miss seeing coaches. I miss uh, drinking beer and eating wings and, and talking football all together face to face. But uh, this is a great uh, situation for us to be able to share some ideas. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about practice plans, et cetera. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get rolling because I know everybody's seven thirties at night. Some people have young kids and luckily I got two kids that are in college and out of the house. So I got a little extra time, but uh, I'm gonna roll with it and hopefully keep it without about a half hour and hopefully somebody will, will get something they can use uh, with what we got going on here at Seaford High School, okay? You all set for me, Brad? All good, man. You share right. your screen whenever you're ready. Let's see what we got. All right, let's see what I got here. All right. All right, fellas. Uh, my name is Mark Quillen. I'm a head football coach at Seaford High School. I've been coaching football for about 32 years now. I'm at a, I'm at a, a, a smaller school now in Delaware. I left a, a Division I school. Uh, we've been there for a, I got there probably last February, just in time for COVID. Um, Seaford High School is a school that really hasn't had a, a winning season in over 20 years. So it's been, a, um, it's been an adventure over this past year with COVID and, and rebuilding a, a once rich tradition. But uh, um, I want to talk a little bit about practice plans. Uh, the reason I chose this is because I've noticed that I've had to really revamp the way I practice and, and the practice plans going from school to school. Uh, I've actually been blessed to be at six different high schools and college levels. So I've had an opportunity to go to different places and, and mostly in Delaware, a little bit of Maryland. So I've been able to kind of see other coaches coach and, and get a chance to put together some good practice plans and share some ideas with you guys today. Uh, I said first thing on there on my, on my little notes there, I threw down some just the basic notes to share with you guys, things that I think that went well for me and things that maybe I struggle with as well. Um, I'm an old school guy. Like I said, I still roll with my manila folder, and uh, but I'm getting better. I'm on a Zoom, so that, that's a major plus right there. Uh, you know, like we all do, we just we just steal shit from other people. I've been really blessed. Uh, when I was in Baltimore, I was head football coach at 24, and, and man, I, I, I fucked up more than I got right, but I had some really good assistants that helped me uh, my first couple of years, I got uh, had a nice stint at Salisbury University with Coach Fleetwood, Coach Sherman Wood. They did some great things uh, for me and, and let me uh, really get my feet wet as a football coach. I coached with Dave Hearn for over 15 years. Um, he's a great football coach here in Delaware. He's won uh, six state championships. I got a chance to be involved with many of them. And um, one thing he gave me was, as D coordinator, he just gave me the run of, the, of the all practice plans on defense. The only thing on his rule was make sure it works and make sure you keep it within a half hour queue. So I got an opportunity to really be a, a better football coach under Dave Hearn. Um, then I moved to Sussex Tech High School. I was a head football coach there for 10 years, and I had 14 great assistants. And those guys all had collegiate experience, a lot of high school experience. So they made me better. So I think listening to your assistants for you know practices and that type of thing really helped me out uh, becoming a better football coach each and every year. So listen to your assistants and, and, and take their advice and, and good things implement and things you don't like act like you do and move on. <laughs> um, <clears throat> some things that helped me was, I typically I like to do our, my next day plan the same night when I come home. That's really helped me a lot. So the minute I come home, uh, when the boys were young, we'd eat dinner, we'd get them to bed when they were real young, and I'd get right on my computer and start planning for the very next day while everything was fresh in my mind. I see a lot of coaches trying to do something during the day uh, during their classes or, or, or in the morning of a practice. And that's really tough to do because you you've kind of forgotten what's happened the day before. So that's something that's helped me tremendously. Um, some changes I've noticed well, for me personally, uh, my practice plans have changed depending on what school I'm at. I've been in a, at a big school. I've been in a small school. I've been in a school that had great culture. I've been in a school that had no culture. So, I've, you know, each school that I've been at, I've had to kind of change my plans depending on what we have. Um, I've also changed my plans depending on what type of team we have, uh, all the experience, the inexperienced. I also changed plans a little bit as far as what time the season is, whether, uh, you know, my plans in the preseason is different than midseason and postseason. So there's really three areas that I try and attack there. So uh, we change from there. I try and meet with my staff after practice to discuss practice and get ideas for the next day. That's always been very helpful. It's also a good time to, to shoot the poop with the coaches. Uh, it's always been a good time for me. So I'll, I'll ask them for advice and, and how do you think practice went? What are you looking at for doing tomorrow? And that gives me a little bit of an idea of how, how we move forward. Um, going from there. I did notice one thing that, uh, that, that sounds crazy, but water organization is always a difficult task. I noticed this year uh, at Seaford, I mean, if I put all the water in one spot and they all congregate to one spot and they get talking and shooting, we lose our focus completely. Um, when I was at Tech a couple years ago, we had four different water stations and each individual group had their water stations. So they had small groups that really helped us out tremendously. Just keeping the kids focused um, they weren't all together at one time. Uh, I usually have one full water break uh, together, usually just before special teams. So I do try to give them a little bit of time to camaraderie, 
together. But uh, but organization of water is key. I learned that in the college level, man. You, you got no break in colleges, man. You got a sip of water and bam, right back to it. So I try to do the same thing. It's a little bit more work for me because we set up our water stations. I do actually. So a little bit more work for me, but it was definitely um, advantageous for me. Um, scout teams are always the toughest thing, man. I know in high school football, man, I've had some bad – bad defensive scout teams and even some worse offensive scout teams so I'm still working on trying to find the right scenario when it comes to scout teams I'll share with you some things once I go through the practice plan on what's best any suggestions please shoot at me but uh you know a smaller school we have limited kids we, we had we ended the season last year with about 22 kids so scout team sometimes was a little bit suspect but uh we did the best we could and uh, that's one thing that we're still continuing to work on something that I learned last thing is uh, is teaching kids how to practice I realized when I got into Seaford they had they really had a, a very poor culture for football and the kids really didn't understand how to practice effectively so we took us most of the year just to learn how to practice and learn and get through practice they had no idea what individual was small group all those things so all that stuff was new for the kids and uh, it just takes them some time by the end of the year I felt that we really had a pretty good practice plan the kids learned what, what, what my expectations Expectations were and the coaches' expectations were. So, those are a couple of things that that I've been good at, and things I've been bad at, and things I've been working on here and there. And um, I'm going to move on to the next thing. And rock and roll. All right. Okay. Uh, this is a mid-season practice plan. I'm going to go hey, through real quick. Hey, coach. Yeah. You might have to hit new share at the top of the screen because I can't see your practice plan. So you're still on the uh, C for J's. Oh, uh, okay. Soft word. All right. Let's see what I got here. So up top, it should be a green button that says, yep, there you go. Got it. Oh, see? <laughs> it's not bad for an old man. I appreciate it. You can't that. teach an old dog new tricks. There you well, go. I, have, I do have my manila folder with a very, you know, share screen. So I'm going to take there. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, this, is a, this is a sample offensive plan that we used last year. I've modified a little bit. I actually sat down after our last football game and redid some of our practice plans. So I didn't screw it up for this coming year. Things we wanted to change. And we're revamping a little bit of our offense. So um, this is going to be a practice plan that we're going to see here coming up this year with uh, some slight modifications to slide this down here. Uh, this is a mid-season practice plan. So again, my preseason practice plans are completely different. A lot more individual, a lot more teaching. This is kind of a mid-season plan that, that uh, I'm pulling up here. Uh, we start off with our dynamic stretch as usual. I always run the dynamic stuff while my assistant coaches are setting up for what they got going on. Um, uh, for our Monday, it's our cheat day. I got this from Sussex Tech when I was there. I had, I had a, a couple of good coaches that said, hey, man, what are we doing on Mondays? Are we going to just go shells? Are we going to do film? Nope. We're practicing on a Monday. We consider that a cheat day. So since we play on Friday night, Saturday, Sunday is enough. Monday is a practice day for us. And I, I know the first day I told the Seaford boys that we were going full pads on Monday, they thought I was crazy. And uh, by, the, by the fourth Monday, they realize that, you know, we're going to practice on Monday. No matter how many kids we have, we're doing an offensive practice. So um, they, were, they were used to getting to work by the end of the year. And uh, we feel like it was, it was just a cheat day. We played uh, at Sussex Tech. We played at a really tough division. And, and hopefully we'll try and get a little extra on that Monday. So uh, we'll go for, of course, first period there is our dynamic. Second period is what we call TTO, which is perfect play. Put the ball on a 10-yard line. We want to get our four best bread and butter plays. We try and make this intense to kind of get a team thing going. Try and make those four plays the things that we think are our go-to things from there. Period three, we go right to individual. We do individual no matter what. We always run individual, except for in postseason when we lose a little bit of sunlight. Um, that's when we'll kind of change them up a little bit, cut back a little bit. If we're, if we're uh, lucky enough to get in the playoffs, I'll cut some fundamental stuff back just a little bit and go back to, to, to 10 minutes instead of that 20. But that's a good time for just getting work in there. Uh, this fourth uh, this fourth period here is called the hub. I got this from Coach Hearn. Coach Hearn gets his quarterbacks, his running backs together. I changed a little bit. Uh, we actually split it up. If I have two two good quarterbacks, I'll bring my three backs or run trap with them, just kind of getting that mesh point together. Then in another station, I'll have the quarterbacks one of my two back jet self. So we'll just kind of get our mesh together, get our timing together. Um, I'll leave the four backs with my running backs, which is kind of our skill top back. And then we'll uh, we'll get him to work some some key pass some some power steps things like that. So I'm still split up a little bit individual, just kind of a small group in the hub, working on just some basic timing situations for those particular small groups. Uh, from there we go into a little pass skelly. Uh, we'll throw some corners. I mean some 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 centers. I'll bring the centers over. We'll do quarterbacks or two backs and our split ends. We'll do a ton of play action stuff. We'll do our bubbles. We'll do our screens. That type of thing. Uh, it's a little bit quicker uh, mid season at the beginning of the season. You know, we don't do as much team. We do a little more time in this past Skelly. Uh, we were getting them probably we were right about this time, about midseason. I don't have a whole lot. I've summed up our offensive playbooks. So we're able to get a lot of reps in a short amount of time. 
Um, from there, we'll go right to our run scale. I'll send the receivers back to my receiver coach, and he'll work on uh, just some basic routes as well as some stalk blocking. And we will, we'll run all uh, through our entire – we call that the six period. We're through our entire run game with just our centers, our quarterbacks, and all of our running backs. Uh, typically just a, another small group. Kids really did that nice job with that in Seaford. Um, if I can throw in some special teams, you see it highlighted. I'll throw some special teams in there if we have time, if things are going well. Uh, you know, I'll, uh, I'll stop and, and throw a little bit of that in there uh, in between a water break, et cetera. Most of my water stations are right there with those kids. So right at the last minute to minute I have of each station, I'll give them a water break and we'll run right to the next station. Um, our linemen are on their own. I'll be honest with you, I've got a great O-line coach. Actually, I've got three great O-line coaches. So I just give him a little bit of a, of a sheet of say, hey, man, get all your fundamentals done. And this is what time I want you to do schemes and we'll get together a team. And, and they do a great job at, at doing that on their own. Um, from there, we go right to team. I do, uh, I do three sets of eight. And uh, sometimes it's, it's uh, just eight plays of like option, eight plays of our pass, eight plays of our power game, or it might be different parts of the field. It depends on kind of what I feel that the kids need from there. Everything's scripted so all the coaches get those eight plays. If we can get um, eight plays in 10 minutes, that's our goal uh, with coaching wise. Sometimes the coaches get talking too much, but we try and get at least that amount of plays, 24 plays in 30 minutes if we can uh, with coaching on the fly. Um, we go to conditioning just after that, do a little special teams in there, pun and, pun and kickoff return are our Monday days, and then close the announcements. It's a pretty long day on Monday. Uh, a lot of teams are done early on Monday. You know, there are, I, I see some teams walking on the field at 4.30. Nope, 5.25, 5.30, man, we're getting the bus. Boys are getting on their bikes, and they're, and they're walking home. So that's our, uh, that's our offensive day. I'm going to cruise on back here and go to my Tuesday plan. I know I'm rolling fast, everyone, but I don't want everybody to be on, the, on Zoom all day long. Plus, I am a poster child for adult ADHD. So I'm going to fly. I know Brad's smiling at me. He said, yeah, you're right, Q, you do. Um, defense is tough, man. Uh, the defense is tough. We go right into our angle pursuit. I got, a, I got a defense quarter named Clint Dunn, played at JMU. He's a fired up dude, man. He loves angle pursuit. Kids hate doing angle pursuit first thing on a Tuesday when it's 90 degrees. Hey, we do it in any way. Are you, are you trying to share your defensive plan? Oh, um, okay. Yeah, you got that. Uh, that's new. Is that a new share? Is that a? Yeah, yeah. Yep. If it's a, if it's another um, document or something, you gotta you gotta hit that new share. There we go. Got it. Yeah. Ah, gotcha. Thanks, coach. I appreciate it. That right. wasn't on the Manila folder, by the way, man. That's that's crazy, man. Crazy. Uh, angle pursuit. We try and go two or three groups. That's a fast paced drill. Coach Dunn does a great job with it. Um, it's just a typical old school stuff, but that's a great way to start a defensive day. We really, the, all the coaches are fired up during that time. So Tuesday can be a tough day. We call it tornado Tuesday. So, um, we, we try to start the day off on a positive note with, with that. And, and they struggle a little bit starting out, but once they get rolling, um, it, it's a good drill. They hate it, but they love it at the same time. We go right to our defensive individual from there. Fundamentals are important. We always start off with tackling technique, the first five minutes of every fundamental station in the defense. Um, we'll do a team's thing on Wednesdays, but we always start off with some type of uh, a fundamental tackling individual for those groups. And, and while I'm doing dynamic, the coaches will get that all set up. We move on to blitz where we'll take all of our, uh, our linebackers, D-line and, and defensive end line and move on barrels and we'll just work our, our blitz techniques or what we want to do for that week. Uh, Coach Dunn will get that all set up and rolling while I got the DBs. We're working on just formation alignment to what we're going to see on that Friday night. Uh, it's a little bit of a slow period for the D-backs. Um, but it but it does help us walk through what we're going to see on Friday night. And then we go right into our seven-on-seven. Seven. Um, what we've done last year was kind of a good idea. We took half our linebackers, and they came to with the DBs, and we did a seven-on-seven seven outside run pass session. And then uh, our other set of linebackers, which would be our first group, they stayed with the D-line guys, and they did all inside run. And we flipped our linebackers about halfway through. So our linebackers kind of got both looks. They got a little bit of outside run and pass. They also got some inside run. Um, you know, it, it, it wasn't always perfect. Um, we had 48 kids on our, in our program last year. So on a Tuesday, we had everyone there. Um, so we kind of split them up, and some young guys got some good work. But that worked out a little bit better than full team, which is what I'm going to get to next. Um, team and scout, we really struggle running a, another offense uh, with, with real young kids. We, we, you know, the, our, the culture was not great. Uh, the football knowledge was not great. So for, you know, a young kid to run a wing tee and get a good look versus our best 11, it was really difficult. We tried some half-line stuff. We ended up at the end of the year not doing any team team defense versus a team O. We just stayed a little bit longer with our seven-on-seven seven and our inside run stuff where we broke it down. 
And then when we came back to team, we did mostly uh, recognition of alignment and that type of thing. Um, you know, at, at, uh, at Tech, we had a little bit bigger, you know, a little bit larger team with a Division One school. So we actually had a scout offense that did a really good job. I had about three coaches that ran that scout offense. So it was a little more effective there than it was at the smaller school. So it depends on your school and what you got. Uh, once we get done with that, we go right to a little bit of no huddle. I'll blow the whistle, go no huddle, get a little skelly going there. We get a little conditioning from there. Then we do our punt return and kickoff, which we consider defensive special teams from there. And that's a long day as well. We're getting out of there at 530. We get our closing announcements on the Tuesday and rolling from there. That's our defensive plan. I'm rolling to Wednesday. How's my time looking, Brad? Am I doing okay, buddy? You are great. You're about 17 minutes in. All good. <laughs> All right. Is, is my screen share okay there? Are you still have the defensive plan up. Is that what you're trying to share? Absolutely not. <laughs> I'm trying to get to a uh, a Wednesday practice plan. Anything there? No. Let's see what I got. Did you hit that new share button up top? I'm looking right now. New share. Oh, oh, baby, here we go. There's our – how's Wednesday look now? That looks like Wednesday practice plan right there. Yeah, that's what we got. All right. Uh, thanks, Brad. You're a good man, brother. All right. Uh, Wednesday plan. Wednesday's a team day for us. I, I, you know, I really like Wednesdays. Uh, the kids like Wednesdays. I know they're about halfway done. I cut it up about 15 minutes short. So we go to about 515 on Wednesdays. Um, I'm going to change it up a little bit this year. Uh, we're going to go ahead and our plan is to do tackling stations to start off Wednesdays. We're going to do four tackling stations this year. This is something new. We did it at I did it when I was at Del Mar with Coach Hearn on defensive days. He let me do it on Wednesdays, too. I'm going to go back to that this year, and we're going to do – that's how we're going to start off our Wednesdays. It's going to be a working Wednesday. And then we go right to all of our team stuff, team offense versus a scout D. Sorry about that. To a scout D. Uh, then we'll move right into our team defense, or we'll do 7-on-7 seven and seven inside run, very similar to what we did on Tuesday. So we'll kind of split it up there. Uh, this is a day where we really get our, our special teams caught up. So we'll get at least four special teams in that day. We'll get our kickoff in, our punt, our punt return, and kickoff return. Uh, so they'll know by 445, they know we're going a, a good amount of special teams. I always end with a little bit of no huddle, two-minute stuff, uh, kick an extra field goal there at the end, and then 515, we're out about 15 minutes early. And typically, Wednesdays, we're done about five, about 15 minutes early that day. So they know as we progress through the week. You know, we're getting a little closer to game time, and, and they, they get a feeling of that. But Wednesday was probably, I felt, one of our most – our best days of practice because the kids knew we were doing a lot of team. We did a little bit of contact, but not a whole lot. We're going Friday here, Brad. Hope I do okay, buddy. I meant Thursday. I'm sorry. Thursday. Share. Look at that. And there's Thursday. There you go. You're catching on. I'm on it. We finish up here. Uh, Thursday's a fun day. You know, I'll be honest with you. I try and be real upbeat on Thursday. I put the music on, whatever, whatever, however we're going to start on Friday night, that's exactly what we do on Thursday. I realized at Seaford that you can't do something on a Friday night and not practice it several weeks beforehand. So we actually practice our Friday night ritual on Thursday. We do it from the first Thursday of the season, August the 17th all the way through to the day we kick off. And by the time we're really ready to go on the first Friday night, the kids got a pretty good idea of what we're looking for. So um, we want to go out on that first night, on a Friday night especially, and, and not look like a, a cluster of kids running around all over the place not knowing where to go. So we practice it every Thursday. I put the music on. Uh, we start off with a 3 to 3.15 kind of a special skill session. I take all the offensive linemen. I put them behind the goal post with my three offensive line guys, and they walk through all their responsibilities on all their basic plays that I give them. So, you know, everything they get a good solid walk through, which is really good for them. They really enjoy that, that, that time where you can kind of walk through some things. Uh, we've got our call special skill, which is our punter, punt returner, long snappers, kickoff guys, kickoff return guys. I've got it all stationed in a half. When the kids come out uh, for warmups, all that set up on the field, just like it is on Friday nights. So they know when they walk in, this is what they got, and, and when they hear the music hit, they know where to go to, and they take off, and they really do a nice job with it. So it gets them kind of really geared towards uh, towards Friday night. Hit the whistle, we go right to the inline, we go do our team dynamic, the exact thing we will do on Friday night, exact team thing. We'll go to uh, five minutes of offensive individual, five minutes of defensive individual, just practicing going from place to place on the field, 
lets the kids know where to go because there's always that one or two kids that you hit the whistle, you tell them where to go, and they're standing there looking around, not knowing where to go. You know, it's always a running back too, by the way. Those are the running backs, man. Yeah, I'm not sure where they go, but we get them going by 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 week one. They're on the fly. Uh, from there, like everyone else does, we, we we go right to TTO. We get four bread and butter plays. And then I send everybody to the bench. And I got this from a really good friend of mine. Uh, the bench drill is a drill that helps kids get on and off the field effectively. Hey, See, Coach. Pull, yeah. Sorry to cut you off. I have a question here. Now, I'm a little <laughs> curious. I'm a little curious about this question and, who, and, and who's asking it. Because if it's somebody that knows you, they would know this answer. It, it's from a staff well, member of mine. I guarantee it is. So, uh, uh, says Coach Q, during practice, what do you do if a fight, if a fight breaks out? I have a, I have a, a, a <laughs> feeling whoever's asking that knows, but maybe not. All right. Well, um, it, I try not to let it phase me. You know, you know boys are boys. They can get a little scrappy sometimes. We had a little scrap there at uh, our very first little scrap there at Seaford. I told them, I said, grab the boys, break them up, get them the hell out of here, and run the next play. So uh, when they got tired, they stopped, they got some water, and we went right back to practice. Sounds like so, good uh, crisis management to me. Yeah, well, you know, we we're, we're, uh, we were we like to have some feistiness out there, and um, but we want to try and keep it as, as low-key as possible. So uh, that would be from one of my assistant coaches. He, was, he told me, he said, Man, coach, like you never seen that before in your life. And I said, well, you know, we got to keep on trucking. So uh, practice is a practice. You can't break up the practice plan. We're on the fly. Um, the bench drill is it's just a great drill for us. Um, you know, in high school, there's always that one or two kids when the punt team is out and you look up and there's nine guys out there. Nothing's more frustrating. Nothing's more embarrassing for a head coach is not have enough guys. And it happens at all levels. But in high school, this was a great drill that really helped me out. And I got it from a, a fellow friend of mine that was really very helpful. Um, I'll send everybody to the sideline. I'll call the offense out. Uh, we do a dirty dozen. That's our 12 of our best plays. We'll go up and down the field. Kids at that time are kind of, they're kind of milling around on the sideline. But at some point, I'm going to call a special team uh, at, at some point during that, during that offensive period. So I might call a punt. I might call a punt return. So the kids have to stop doing what they're doing, hear the call from the special teams, got and hustle out on the field. Very, very helpful. Um, we go right from our dirty dozen to our goal line. We do special plays. Then we go right to our defensive alignment. Again, we're calling all this from the sideline. So I'll bring the defense out. I'll bring the scout team. They're kind of running back and forth off the bench. And once the kids have gone through it a couple of times, they kind of know what to expect. Then the important part is the special teams. At the end, I'll call kickoff, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, and they're just getting used to getting on the field, setting up, kicking the ball off, hustling off. Get kick, kick off return, hustling, just getting on and off the field effectively and making sure we have 11. Hey, Coach. Um, yeah. Got another question for you. Um, so, this uh, – one of our coaches on here wants to know, he says, this looks like a midseason plan. What changes uh, would you make if it were a preseason plan? Great, great question. Preseason plan, we do very little team till the very, very end. Um, be honest with you, when, when it's um, on, on, on Monday or on a Tuesday, I usually – preseason, Monday, Tuesday, I'll go back with the same plan for a Wednesday, Thursday. You know what I mean by that? So, like my Monday plan would be a lot of individual. We'll do 35 minutes, 40 minutes of individual. Then when we go to our small groups, it's 40 minutes instead of maybe 20 minutes. So, we'll do a lot of teaching. Um, I don't do a whole lot of team until I feel that we've gotten our concepts down in a small group. Um, you know, kids learn in pieces and parts. So, we go from an individual group to a small group to another small group to another small group sometimes, and then to the large group so we can kind of have a progression through. Um, and when I feel like the kids are feeling like they have a team, they feel they're good with team, then we can we can roll with it. So that's how it changed. But really it's kind of the time period is really it. Um, this day actually is probably, for, uh, for us, this will be our seventh or eighth practice, this particular plan, on a preseason day. So I'll actually introduce this after about seven or eight practices, depending on the, the experience of the team. That's a great question. Um, so really the time, my, my practice plan doesn't change, but the time has definitely changed, and I cut back on, on some things. Um, I hope that answers the question, I hope. Um, we uh, Going back to our bench drill, we always end with victory, our victory formation, and then we also do our extra point is the very last thing that we do. Um, notice there that I, I send the JV guys home on Thursday. I love the JV guys, but they're a little bit of a distraction at times on Thursdays. So I'll be honest with you, I, I send their butts on home and uh, I just, we just got the dress guys uh, at about 4.30. We get a lot done until 4.30, 4.30, 4.45. We'll get our Friday agenda, let them know kind of what's going on. We give out our uniforms and we do it. We eat our meal between five and 5.15 on a Thursday. Um, 
Seems like a lot, but when we get to that bench drill, man, we fly through. I get those 12 plays in, we get our defensive alignment, we get right to our special teams that are off the field. By the last week, man, we were at Seaford, which can be a little bit of a poop show sometimes. Uh, they really did a nice job the last couple of weeks of figuring out what they, what they wanted to do and, and getting on off the field. And we had very few penalties. We probably had maybe two or three penalties, special teams, by not having enough guys or having too many, which was a, which was a blessing and, 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 a, and an improvement in our culture as the years go by. Um, I hope that answers everybody's question. I, I hope that, you know, I had a good, really good friend of mine that shared with me, he said, you know, if you go to one clinic and you get one thing out of a clinic or a talk, whatever, it was worth the time that you spent there. Um, I thought that was really great advice because a lot of us go to clinics, we listen to YouTube videos, and well, there's so much information that people have. I think if you can just pick out one thing that'll make your, your group a little bit better, your team a little bit better, it was worth spending the time with, with a fellow coach. Um, like I said, I, I'd much rather do this on a whiteboard and chit chat and shoot the poop with everybody and, uh, and enjoy some camaraderie, but uh, this was a great opportunity to share some ideas, and thanks, Brad, for that. Um, and, and Coach, you know, I, I think you did an excellent job, and, and I, you know, Everybody on here, Coach and I have kind of a unique relationship. I was I was able to coach under Coach Quillen his last year there at Sussex Tech, and then when he decided to move on and, and pursue other endeavors, I, I was able to take over there for him at Sussex Tech. But I can tell you right now that um, there's not one thing he doesn't do that's not scripted or scheduled. That was the biggest thing that I took from him. And I know one, one of the biggest things that I, I was able to take from you is scheduling uh, on Friday nights. From the time those kids arrive to kickoff, there is a Friday schedule. And I know that was something huge as a young head coach that, that I took. And I was like, yeah, I mean, this works. I need it. And if anybody, if, if for anything, it was for myself, you know. So everything had a schedule, everything had a script. So you do a damn good job with it, Coach. Yes, Coach. I'll tell you, you know, I'm going to show you a little, little bit about the school that I'm at now. I realized after being there for a year that the kids' lives outside of football – is a mess. Mm -hmm. And then when I came in, I'm, I'm really organized. I want things to go a certain way. And the kids really had to learn my expectations and how to be organized when their outside lives are in such a disarray. Um, I think as the year went by, of course, it went through our ups and downs. Whenever you make a, a change in life, you know, you, you struggle a little bit for that first year. But as we progressed, the kids realized that the importance of structure, the importance of time, the importance of being on time, just those little things, I think, made our football team better and made our, our young men better, which is, which is the most important thing as we go through. We all want to win football games and, and be undefeated and win state championships. But if you can change that life and make those kids a little bit better. Um, I think that's a true blessing for being a football coach. I love coach football, man. I hope so everybody got at least one thing out of it. Um, if you're from Delaware, rock and roll. I wish everybody the best luck in season. Stay safe, stay healthy. And again, thanks, Brad, for bringing everybody together, man. I greatly appreciate that, brother. Absolutely, coach. And guys, just, just as a reminder, um, I'm going to put this recording on the channel, and that link is in the chat. Um, if anybody has any questions, ask them now. Forever hold your peace. Uh, if not, we're going to get off here, and I'm going to let you guys enjoy dinner or whatever else you got going on. And we'll be back uh, Thursday night for some special teams uh, talk. So I will see you guys uh, Thursday. Thanks, Coach. Good luck, everybody. Thank you, Coach. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys.